So let's talk more Olympics and the crying game. And I don't mean that in a cruel way. It's just that crying has become part of not just the Olympic Games, but all sports. The agony of defeat startlingly clear at the Olympics. No matter the sport, tears often flow with every loss. Perhaps the most heartbreaking spectacle? American gymnast Jordan Weber. NBC couldn't resist. The camera stayed on Weber for so long, a New York Times columnist wrote, NBC's concentration on Weber wasn't just intense. It was melodramatic, voyeuristic, and borderline sadistic. The real housewives of the uneven parallel bars. Fact is, Weber's on-camera distress is not limited to Olympic teenagers, and it's not a new phenomenon. Michael Jordan cried. Wayne Gretzky cried. Yes, athletes have cried for a long time, and the cameras love it. Brett Favre, anyone? I'd like to thank the, the Packers for giving me an opportunity as well. I hope that every penny... Wide receiver Terrell Owens teared up after Dallas lost to the Giants in a playoff game. Yeah, I know Cowboy fans, but back in the day, elite athletes didn't cry much, at least publicly. Remember the movie A League of Their Own? Now you start using your head! It took place during World War II. <laughs> Are you crying? No. There's no crying in baseball! Today... There's plenty of crying in baseball, Mike Schmidt, anyone, tennis, Andy Murray, basketball, LeBron James, and the list goes on. And joining us to talk more about this is sports psychologist Dr. Rick Van Haveren and Tiki Barber, formerly a New York Giant. Welcome to you both. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I can't wait to talk about this. So Tiki, <laughs> I have to ask you, have you ever cried publicly? I think I have, actually. When Wellington Mara, who was one of our team owners, passed away, and we played a game against the Washington Redskins that next weekend, I had a great day, and it was an extremely emotional experience because we were all close to him as a man, uh, but also for what he represented. And, and, and after being successful, uh, sometimes you can't contain that emotion, and it comes out in the form of tears. It's not a bad thing. No, I mean, I, I, I know it's not a bad thing. It's just that it's, it seems to be always captured on camera, and I wonder <laughs> if that bothers athletes. Well, you know, I don't think it bothers athletes. I think that we as a society have become so voyeuristic, as was stated in that New York Times article, and we crave emotion. We crave to see the human side of these athletes who we've, we've built up to be invincible. Uh, but in the, at the end of the day, we are all just human, and I think the athletes that you're seeing at the Olympics are human. They cry when they fail. They cry when they're successful because that's what they're really feeling. Well, Dr. Van Haveren, I, I just want to ask you this question. You know, we're looking at poor Justin Weber, and she's crying. And, and she can't stop crying and the camera is on her a and you wonder you know it goes through your mind is this is she too wrapped up in her sport is this too much for her to bear I don't think it's too much uh, like Tiki mentioned in, in some ways athletes are unique but in other ways they're they're people like everyone else and they do have emotions so when they do well when they don't do well they're gonna have those types of emotions but couldn't your whole identity be wrapped up in this sport and if it's over for you let's say at the Olympic Games I mean could that mean like possible trouble down the road? Well, definitely. Uh, if an athlete's identity is too involved and the whole identity of the family is too involved, then an athlete might have problems down the road dealing with loss. Uh, some research shows that athletes who have a high identity and experience uh, an injury and their career is over, they typically have more difficulty coping than athletes who have more of a balanced yeah, identity. Yeah, because it's not just the gymnast who's losing, her whole family is losing because they've poured their finances into this young athlete all of their time and the athletes then, you know, she bears the guilt of losing not only for herself but her, and her team but her family. That's correct and that's a lot to manage especially for some of the younger athletes. They might be 17 years old and they're doing very adult type things in very adult roles but they're still teens and they have the coping skills and and some of the emotions of any 17 year old. Okay, uh, Going back to the world of pro sports Tiki, uh, remember I'm sure you remember Lou Gehrig if anyone had reason to cry during his moving goodbye speech Lou Gehrig did. Instead he said he was the luckiest man on the face of the earth. Today though when athletes retire the tears flow. When did that change? 
You know, I, I think it was different with Lou Gehrig. Obviously, he had a terminal illness, and he wanted to uh, present this stoic, uh, in, in control person, and it was important. But now, I think we've gotten so wrapped up as athletes into what it is to be a, to be an athlete. To be honest with you, at a very young age, your development is arrested. I call it it's, a, it's an arrested development of normal uh, of, of of a normal upbringing, and so that when it's gone. It's, it's very hard to accept that, that you, now you have to become a normal person. And you see a lot of problems for athletes, especially those that play professionally for a long time as they try to transition into the real world. So, so does anyone help you guys with that? Well, there, there are a lot of resources that the NFL and the other leagues put out there to help athletes make that transition, but it's hard because you, you have to almost see yourself as invincible, as infallible, that I can play this game forever. Otherwise, you start doubting yourself and you risk uh, not succeeding. Uh, so when that goes away, when that you know, facade comes down, it's very, very difficult to act like a normal person again. But I think there are resources out there if guys would, 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 would accept it. Dr. Rick Tiki Barber, thank you so much for joining us. This morning was a great conversation. I'm Carol Costello. Thank you for joining us.